Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Boucher, Head of Content at Event Marketer. I'm joined by our Managing Editor, Juanita Shavaro Arias. Hi, Juanita. Hi, Rachel. And our special guest and EDTA judge, Tara Swanson, former Senior Director, Special Projects at Apartment Therapy Media. Hi, Tara. Hi, how are you? So happy to be here. Great to have you. Okay, so as we wind down the year, we're thrilled to be live once again. This is our second annual LinkedIn Live for the EDTAs to celebrate the release of the 2023 Experience Design and Technology Award winners. It was a year of more, as our team put it, more tailored experiences, more technical aspects, more sophisticated strategies, and most importantly, more value. Uh, and spoiler alert, perhaps more color too. Uh, the EDTAs are an annual recognition of the best use of design and technology in events, and they're intended to look at some of the specific components of events and experiential activations and to acknowledge all the different moving parts that together add up to and function as something big. Juanita? Thanks, Rachel. And just like our all-encompassing X Awards program, the EDTAs are scored by a panel of brand side judges. I want to take a moment to thank the group that helped us review the 2023 EDTA campaigns this year. You see all their smiling faces up there. Thank the you. judges, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much to all of them. The judges scores were based on how the overall design and execution or the technology helps satisfy objectives for the brand inspire progress for the industry. So for the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to discuss the award-winning aspects of a few of the high-scoring case studies in the program. We've chosen six for our discussion today, and we'll provide a quick overview on each before diving into the key takeaways. And second spoiler alert, these campaigns did in fact win their categories and the gold award. After we wrap up here, you're invited to head on over to eventmarketer.com where all the winners and the extensive coverage is posted. We'll be sharing the news with the entire community as well. The winners are also featured in our latest print issue, which will be reaching homes and offices over the next couple of weeks. So without further ado, let's get started. Thanks, Juanita. Okay, I'll kick things off with our first case study and here's the setup. Uh, Away Travel Brands Extraordinary is Out There event activation, activated with partner Superfly, was designed to capture the hearts of post-pandemic travel-hungry consumers. In the pop-up experience, experience, AI dreamscapes merged with real-world destinations as custom postcards. Consumers took a personalized questionnaire about their ideal travel destination. The responses were then fed into the program, which built custom AI-generated landscapes on postcards in collaboration with the artist Ulysses. Over the course of two days, the brand printed hundreds of custom AI postcards uh, from passersby, each one carrying away a unique dream destination, which only the consumer's imagination could bring to life. I love that. So this event won the Gold Award for Best Use of Artificial Intelligence. And Tara, you reviewed the case study. What caught your attention about the activation overall and the use of AI? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that there's so much conversation about AI, right? And everyone's trying to understand how to incorporate it into your event programming or your, or your marketing campaigns. And first and foremost, what I loved is that Away was not afraid to embrace it. They embraced it. They went out there. They created this pop-up experience that truly provided something unique for consumers. Um, and really, their whole thing was to prove that you can dream up this amazing ideal location. But at the end of the day, there's something in the world that you can explore with Away being their brand that's even better. And they challenged consumers, as you said, to answer this questionnaire, come up with like personalized outputs, which was unique to each user. So first and foremost, it was a conversation starter amongst those that were standing there because person one didn't get the same answer as person two and three and four. So it was very customized, which is what people are looking for when they come out to attend and different experiences. And then they all were given the, the, the dream to be able to go out there and explore the world and really and injected that life back into the travel industry that was so wrongfully stripped away from all of us for so many years. You know, I think that what they did was create this personalized experience 
gave consumers something to talk about and used AI in a very approachable manner where sometimes people get a little scared because they don't know what it's going to mean or what it's going to do. But it was very fun, very playful and created a beautiful portfolio and library of images, um, as you just showed. And how have you seen AI impact event work? You know, any larger takeaways here from this creative concept for the industry? Yeah, I mean, I think that in order for marketers to feel comfortable layering in AI into their programs, they need to feel comfortable with it themselves, you know, and I think that this past year, we saw a lot of it. I, I mean, you even saw a lot to introduce this new category for this year. So it's just like rising up and up. And I think that you know, for me and a lot of my fellow marketers and peers in the in the industry, we've started to use chat GPT and like other AI technology on the planning end. So to really help create some ideas and generate some brainstorming and come up with different things that might not have been at our, you know, top of mind, we have been able to, you know, prompt AI technology to give us some creative outputs that then we obviously take and create and mold to fit like our branding, our clients branding, our tone of our event and what that is. But really, we were able to have a starting point and a launch pad for new ideas and new embracing of different technologies that are that are out there. I love that. You know, I think about the planning process and I, someone said to me that, you know, like just the the recap activities that you have to do post event to be able to utilize some of the AI tools to speed that process up, not even just in the pre planning, but just the post event. And mm -hmm. all that. It's just super, super interesting. Um, yeah, very yeah. much so. I mean, I think that you can even utilize for signage creation or promotional creation in general. And then you obviously mold it and then take it back to create your own, um, put your own twist and stamp on it to make sure that it fits your objectives. But when we're all working against the clock and time is of the essence, it really can just help to serve as an extension of your team. Yep. Uh, and I'll mention too, and I, I, for I loved the metallic, by the way, against the the color and the dreamy, you know, landscapes here, and the activation attracted two thousand uh, visits or recorded two two thousand visits, and nearly six hundred postcards were generated out of it, which I thought was pretty great. And then I saw uh, one of the questions, which I thought was just so fun. When we talk about the questionnaire, I think that they're, you know pretty effective engagement devices doing a questionnaire, especially when you have questions like this. If you could replace all the grass in the world with something else, what would it be? Like, right. <laughs> it's just like such a great question. Um, and then the activation kicked off this 360 degree campaign and it certainly wasn't in need of any content. I mean, for it, right? Plenty of fodder and content to work from between the survey response that they got from the event. And then of course, all the amazing imagery that was generated out of this, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I think that it, it really just it's like the event is one component of the larger marketing strategy and it all just fed into one another to create a really beautiful dreamscape and dreamlike campaign. Yeah. OK, moving on to our next case study, and that's Cadillac's Electric Theater. It was activated in partnership with Jack Morton to support the launch of its first fully all electric vehicle, the Lyric. Cadillac told a technology field story around its vision for the future of luxury through a 360 degree multimedia installation dubbed Electric Theater. The automaker brought the experience to iconic sporting events like the US Open and transported attendees to an alternate reality using 3D, uh, 3D LED content that wrapped around the interior of the structure and morphed into real time data. There's a lot there to <laughs> take in, uh, as well as high def projection mapping, interactive floors, and positional tracking. Uh, an original musical score amplified by 360 degree sound design topped it all off. And this program won the gold for best combination of event technologies. All right, Juanita, this one was yours. Yes. Uh, walk us through some of the major takeaways for you on this one. Yeah, absolutely. So the target audience for this was luxury buyers in the 38 to 48 year old range. And from the brand's research, they're attracted to technology, to tech based experiences and their lifestyle interests include attending and watching sporting events. So it was really smart on Cadillac's part to feature the electric theater at golf, tennis and auto show events around the country like you just mentioned. 
Um, and the theater really sought to tell the story of Cadillac's history and its future EV vision. So it leveraged video animations of the lyrics data and design details and 360 degree projection mapping to envelop the attendees. So 10 to 15 attendees could go into the theater at a time to watch the film and the film played every 10 minutes. Um, so one of the coolest aspects of the theater, and you kind of saw it in one of the pictures, was that the floor, walls, and ceiling came to life with moving graphics and gesture recognition, um, like those bright circles that you see right there. And the circles followed the attendees' physical movements around the floor. So that's kind of a surprise and delight moment for people who went into this, this theater experience not knowing what was inside this huge box. How does this program map back to some larger themes that we've been seeing uh, over the past couple of years? Certainly this like mystery box concept comes right. to mind for me. Yeah, absolutely. There's something about mystery boxes and car presentations. That's something that I saw at CES this year, where you usually have like a, a tall black box type of exhibit with branding on the outside, and that's all the information that you get. And so it gets passersby curious about what's going on in there. I really need to go in and see and experience it. Um, but you don't know until you get inside. So what I like about this exhibit specifically is that they had the Lyric vehicle actually outside so that you could see it beforehand. If you were curious, that's what's gonna be inside. It kind of gave you a hint. Whereas like other times, you know, it could just be a big black box and you're like, I don't know. I'll just keep walking. So I really liked that it had that from the very beginning of the experience and it kind of draws you in to learn more about the model. But it's also available for closer examination post experience. You know, once you're inside of that theater, when the presentation ends, you're kind of uh, pressed to leave to, so that they can start the next show. So if you were curious to learn more about the vehicle, you can go out and see it firsthand. So it's not like you were just kind of stuck in there for a few minutes and then had to leave. Um, but really it's about creating that immersive theater experience. I think it can be kind of maybe a little uh, different to call it a theater because it's not like you're going in there taking a seat and watching a show right in front of you. You're walking around the space and you're engaging with the technology. Um, so no matter where you look inside the box, because they made it a 360 degree experience, all of the lights and the colors are coming at you to create that wow factor. And that's gonna stick with you and pull you out of the environment of the event that you're attending. So you're out of that environment and into the brand, even if just for a few minutes. And I think that's the ultimate goal. Yeah, Tara, anything strike you about this one? Uh yeah, what I loved is that they used so much data to identify where they needed to activate, right? Like they knew that their consumer enjoyed watching, you know, tennis or golf. And with that, they chose very strategic activation points to be able to build out this experience, knowing that they already had a captive audience. Um, and I think that we see that more and more where everybody... You, you know, you, no one has the luxury of just being able to pop up where they want to. It's not just about the feels. It's all about the data and trying to understand, like, truly what is going to generate the larger ROI at the end of the day. So that was really interesting to me. On the, on the planning and the forefront, but then also like the use of all of the technology and creating that amazing wow factor. I had the same call out. Like, I think it's very interesting that they called it a theater when it's such an immersive experience, you know, and I think that it just goes to showcase that it is an experience that will live with the consumer once they leave. It's not just going to be like a standard stadium style seating of watching a video. They really were a part of that whole build out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, Rachel, I'll turn to you and set us up with our next case study. And that is Amazon Port by Amazon Ads, activated in partnership with Salt Agency. Amazon invited Can Lions attendees to dock at its port for relaxed networking and casual learning across a sprawling 24,000 square foot space situated right on the Mediterranean. Interactive product ex exhibits, a cafe, large networking hubs, cozy meeting rooms, multiple stages featuring content sessions and fireside chats, ample workspace, rosé all day happy hours. I think we'd enjoy that. And live DJs kept the energy pumping day and night. 
So this program won the gold for best overall B2B environment. Rachel, what worked well here in this case study? Yeah, so I mean, we all know that, you know, at CAN, networking and meetings are, are key, key goals for uh, the companies that are there. And we know that it has this stunning backdrop, right? Uh, I think it's certainly a strategic challenge to design for that vibe while differentiating your brand experience from, from, from the rest. And I thought the backstory here was interesting. After debuting at Cannes in 2022, Amazon ads arrived this year with one of the largest footprints at the festival uh, and in a location that uh, was allowed uh, that for the first time had an activation. And I think they said like 68 years. So they really kind of differentiated themselves by finding uh, un chartered territory <laughs> at Cannes and then just going super sized with scale. Um, design decision that stuck out uh, all aboard. <laughs> uh, the circular theme, seating pods were placed around uh, large circular pools. There were circular canopies overhead. And in contrast to the airy vibe outdoors, in Amazon affiliate zones indoors within the footprint, there was this dark, glowing, like retro motif. So I'll show you a little bit of the outdoor here and then indoors where they had some mm -hmm. partner um, affiliates and just gosh, like what a contrast. Um, again, color was really a star this year and you're gonna continue to see it as we finish off our, our case studies. Yeah, and what does this say about B2B events moving forward? Yeah, I mean, look, we say this all the time. I mean, they created what they called an adult playground. Mm -hmm. um, fun and inventive programming. That was their goal here. And that's certainly an evolution that we've seen in business events over the years. They really covered their bases here. Uh, there was sound baths, game nights, a concert from LCD Sound System. You know, at Cannes, it's a high value audience, a high value location. People stick around. They typically RSVP uh, for, for, you know, to attend. Uh, it's very VIP and you need a packed schedule and you need to give them multiple layers of things and experiences to do. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I think we tend to think of these fun festival style experiences to be reserved for the consumer audience, but there's nothing that says that the B2B side can't incorporate them into their activations. I thought the experience really leaned into that um, festival oasis setting that they were aiming to create and brought a refreshing vibe to the can attendees. Um, particularly with offering the morning workouts like you saw with that um, yoga picture and um, water moments, water elements that fit the location. And I think this is an opportunity to take a break from the business and product chats that people have throughout the event. Um, and you're getting your brand in front of the participants. Um, so it's, you know, I think then that kind of spreads the word of like, oh, you need to go to this space because it's really relaxing and you can take a break and people go for that chill vibe moment. But then they also get to learn about Amazon and its its brands and the products throughout. So I think that that's, that's just a win-win overall. Yeah. Yeah. So again, uncharted space at a crazy competitive uh, event, playground, just fun, relaxing things and exciting things. And then just color and contrast just really, I thought, came together nicely. Definitely. Yeah. So we'll kick off with uh, case study four. So coming back over to you, Tara. Um, we're going to look at Roku City, and uh, it was produced by Roku with partner Design Scene. Roku didn't just arrive at South by Southwest with an activation, it arrived with the whole city, with its sights set on leveraging its mega popular screensaver as a platform to engage existing customers and lure in new ones. The brand presented Roku City, a physical embodiment of its digital artwork. Drenched in the brand's signature purple color, as you're seeing here, the three-story space was filled with sensory touch points like the Purple Rain Room, where attendees could press a remote to activate a vivid purple rain and thunderstorm experience as Prince's Let's Go Crazy played. Or Roku Street, where a projection map visual of robots and UFOs were mixed with 3D scenic builds and hidden Easter eggs. This experience won the gold for best overall consumer environment. So... Tara, what were your initial thoughts on this case study and the Steelworthy ideas? 
Yeah, you know, I think that as humans, we're all craving these unique experiences and this experience delivered really just that. They had one, as you said, for best overall consumer environment. And you can tell that at every touch point, they made sure that the consumer came first. Um, it was very strategic, very incorporated into the entire component from the, the line queue outside all the way through the three level activation that they did. You know, I think that um, the cool factor is that they took a digital only environment that was only available on TV screens, you know, in people's homes and built it out into a fully immersive activation and experience for people to experience in person. Um, and they did so with the utmost attention to detail, as you can see from all of these experience touch points and activations from the bridge that they had with like the padlocks that mimicked like the the Paris bridge that you can put like your love locks on the you know the the purple rain room and all of those things um they made sure that when people entered into this experience and chose to come in because the event was activated at South by Southwest so there's a ton of things also for people right. to spend their time at so once they came in and invested their time they made sure that they created an amazing environment for that consumer. Um, and with that said, the, the whole space served as like this amazing backdrop for social content creation. You know, I think that that is something that we're seeing across the board in so many different um, realms. You know, social and scaling your experience is no longer just like a nice to have. It is truly the expectation. So while everybody's striving for, you know, really great in-person footprint attendees and guest counts, there also is like that impression count that you want and you want to see how it resonated on social and how the, um, the brand is being expanded. So they created this beautiful backdrop that guests would feel compelled to share on their socials. And then ultimately that helped to enhance their digital footprint. But simultaneously, there were like these digital ambassadors that also spread the word about the program, which encouraged people to come back and experience the event while they were out South by Southwest. You know, I think that color, again, as you had said and saw it in like the last, ex uh, last case study, they tapped into their signature purple color and played into it in a very tasteful manner. It's not that there were, you know, huge logos and things all over the place that made you feel like you were not in an authentic environment, but all of the, the, the purple touches that, you know, from like the coloring, they had the purple drenched outside of their space, the three, the three floors of their entire venue, they basically took over and had it, um, you know, drenched in the purple color. Um, and then all of the other different elements that they had just made you feel like you were in a very robust environment. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, South by Southwest is such an interesting event because it takes place over all of Austin. You know, you have so many options of places to see and do because you're going over the whole city. So what do you think is a key piece of the playbook in competing within a crowded environment like that? What did they do well here for that event specifically? Yeah, you know, I think that they made sure to stand out from like the outside in, you know, like they branded themselves, created consumer interest. And then once people decided to attend, they also had brand ambassadors that interacted with the guests in the queue. So there was already an investment from both parties from the consumer side, but then also from the brand side. So at that point, they made sure that they had a visual impact on the street, generated attendance, and then locked them in very early on in that process. Um, and then also, um, they offered the opportunity to screen custom um, VIP, to basically screen content up front that wasn't necessarily available to everybody. So with that said, offering some form of like a premium VIP experience made sure that people had something in it for them once they attended the actual experience. I love the way that you put that, that the uh, brand was invested and the attendees were invested. There was equal investment in mm -hmm. whatever length of time it took to get in or to, to participate. And I, I like that, that, that thinking uh, that you presented there. Yeah. Okay. Now turning to Maison Mercedes. 
executed in partnership with Salt XC. This lavish 8,000 square foot pop-up focused on the Canadian launch of a concept car. The space served as a boutique shop offering luxury goods from lifestyle brands that match the aesthetic of Mercedes vehicles, um, a backlit listening station with a custom recorded soundscape, and a scenic 3D moonscape encouraged social sharing. Uh, attendees traveled through a tunnel lined with red LED lights to a marketplace where they found an underground garage uh, and an interactive projection mapping experience that centered on the Mercedes G-Wagon. And the program won the gold for best retail pop-up or experience. And Juanita, we know luxury brands often have to execute on a non-luxury brand budget. So what were some standout details and decisions from uh, for you on this program? Yeah, there's a lot of design that goes into crafting a vehicle and Mercedes wanted to connect the fashion industry with the automotive industry to show the beauty and um, sophistication that its designers create. So a way to kind of elevate that luxury experience was to partner with luxury fashion brands and couture designers like Varsity Headwear. Um, it showcased within the manufacturer half of the space. Um, their attendees could um, personalize caps because that's a, you know, their headwear brand. They could personalize caps using a diamond tip jewelry engraving machine. So with that, the attendees are coming away with a piece of luxury swag that they customize themselves. Um, so it's not like a giveaway that was just put into their hands or something that they went to pick up themselves. They actually became a designer for a few minutes and um, were able to personalize um, their items. So in that case, they're more likely to hang on to their caps and use them rather than, you know, toss something that isn't useful or meaning to them. It kind of adds that extra value while also um, having that luxury experience front and center. Yeah. Tara, I know you took a took a look at this. Anything you want to weigh in on? No, I mean, I think that when you're saying like the customized experience and making sure that it's very personalized and it's not just normal swag, I mean, nobody needs the, the basic swag that we have anymore. Everybody wants to declutter and get rid of all of that kind of thing. So when you do have the opportunity to create these customized you know, takeaways for consumers, like the away example, the customized photo postcard. It's very unique, very personalized, which is what people are looking for because they want them, they want what they curate in their homes and in their life to be all about what they prefer. And I think that um, this is a great example of how to do that. And just making sure that like you're tapping into the synergies of all of the brands, like high end premium and exclusive, but then bringing it down to the consumer in a great takeaway moment. I'll add too that, you know, this, this positioning of the vehicle in the storefront, kind of like you would see on, you know, Fifth Avenue in New York, you know, this the beautiful display that they did here where the, the vehicle is this, you know, jewel you know uh yeah. it's this thing to when it beckons you to come in which i just thought was just absolutely beautiful yeah. and again another example too of contrast so mm -hmm. as you move through the space and there was a very intentional tunnel that they created essentially that you would transition from one space to the next and there was that moment of contrast from that other side to this side i thought was really interesting yeah okay so I'll wrap things up with uh, Brunswick at CES 2023, um, an exhibit activated with partner Cubic. Brunswick's portal at CES 2023 allowed attendees to see, feel, and experience the joy of being on the water and its products and how its products and technologies are uh, enhancing the experience for boating participants. And so they created this aqua arena, a 60 foot by 70 foot island booth featuring this blue oval structure. Uh, there was a curved 50 foot long skyscape printed fabric uh, in this uh, overhead that completed the arena feel. Uh, the exhibit won the gold for best trade show transformation. I'll talk a little bit about that now. So in 2020, Brunswick for the first time exhibit, exhibited at CES in Las Vegas, and it premiered an impressive new boat and talked about how technology is transforming the industry and how it's at the center of what they what they do. So the booth was essentially, in 2020, was like a galley, and there was a display on one side and sort of nautical style stadium seating on the other, 
uh, and an augmented reality feature so attendees could view information about the boat display through the screen. Really, the product was the hero and it made a statement. It caught a ton of buzz at the show. Fast forward to three, a few years and Brunswick went virtual during the pandemic uh, until it returned to in-person in 2023 with this new exhibit concept that was designed to encourage attendees to step inside the technology and sustainability story. And while the previous exhibit was about that show-stopping product moment, this was designed as an immersive journey. And a few things immediately came to mind for me. Balls. So we saw this a lot at CES 2023, and that was booths and experiences that were closed in and offered an escape from the show floor. This design had two entry points uh, and the marine style viewing windows around the perimeter so you could kind of peek in and see what was going on inside. Again, it's kind of that mystery box effect that we talked about earlier. Uh, and then AV. Uh, the outer wall had an undulating uh, display that looked like um, water reflections. Uh, lighting effects created a flow of water across the floor of this aqua arena. And the flow started outside of the footprint and entered through one of the thresholds circled around in front of the major displays in the exhibit and then flowed out of the second threshold back into the show like a meandering river or stream as they described in the application which i thought was really great so the lighting effects help spotlight critical moments in the attendees journey you didn't need bold like wild signage the the av did that for people uh, i thought the product displays were an interesting choice too um Inside, there was a raised uh, viewing platform that wrapped around a, a Sea Ray boat showcasing two outboard motors. So attendees had like a different perspective on the product. Sometimes there's something about stepping up and being elevated and looking down that I think changes how you view something. Um, other motor displays were uniquely engineered so the product looked suspended in the air and it created like a 360 degree view of that product. Uh, and within this exhibit was an enclosed alcove with a really cool boating simulator demonstrating the brand's self-docking technology. So almost a box within a box <laughs> talking about it. Um, so like for sure, CES, it's sensory overload and this created a physical journey through the company's story and the products and te technologies it wanted to call out this year. And again, what they did, how they, the, uh, the messages that they gave people through the AV effects and the different ways to view the product, I thought were just really, really smart choices. Um, We'll be at CES 2024 in just a few weeks, and we're looking forward to seeing what's trending uh, in exhibit design on the show floor. Um, any, anything come to you, you two? I didn't, I didn't ask you to provide any feedback, but anything on this exhibit that strikes you? Yeah, I so I actually saw this exhibit in person when I was at CES, and it was it was one that really caught my attention. Um, it kind of goes back to that experience like we were talking about, where especially in a convention center where there's so much going on, there's sights and sounds and a lot of things are happening. When you have these walls up, you know, you have that entrance, you're like kind of beckoned by that water imagery and you're like, what's going on? The lighting is very cool. And so you kind of step in and you're immersed in this very water themed environment. And for me, it kind of separated the exhibit from the fact that we were an actual convention center um, and people were really milling about. But um, the coolest thing that I saw was the simulator that you mentioned, because um, at the time that I was there, people were like waiting in line to get their hands on that thing um, so that they could they could power the boats through. And it was so lifelike. It was really cool. So I think anything that you can do that's interactive to engage attendees with a hands-on experience is going to put your brand in their heads that much that much more and um it was just such a cool experience from the lighting to the design um and yeah I, I applaud them for that a couple of comments too uh, tom, tom, thank you tom saw that firsthand at ces yeah definitely excellent okay so that was our uh, little showcase of some of the winners. But uh, before we wrap, I just want to do a quick review of what's on the horizon uh, in event marketing in 2024. And Tara, I'm going to put you back in the hot seat. Um, what design and technology trends have had your attention this year and that you think will continue to impact the industry in 2024? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that we've seen it a lot in these examples as well, but two of the main things that come to mind for me is really the incorporation of consumer-facing AI technology and what that is going to look like for consumers having those interactive, one-off, personalized experiences while they are attending an activation. Um, and then also the idea of like projection mapping and having those immersive experiences that can relate to so many different brands in so many different ways. You know, I think that we've talked about doing immersive dining experiences and having people seem as if they are in a, you know, an open field, but really they're in a venue in a city and really just tapping into that to transport people to somewhere else that they might not be able to physically get to, but mentally they're being transported through the idea of the visual of where they are actually sitting. Um, and I think that we also saw this in a lot of the examples, but even when we're designing color palettes for our programming, it is very much leaning into color and leaning into brights and making sure that, you know, it's very warm and inviting for consumers, but then also like we're doing, we're having pops of color to make them feel welcome, to make them feel as though they are a part of something that is um, fresh and new and innovative and sort of staying, stepping out of the comfort zone of just being very neutral and really coming at something with a, a fresh color palette. Um, and then just in general, sustainability is always something that's very top of mind for us. Um, I think that we, we're always looking at different ways to make our events more sustainable, whether it is like utilizing recycled wall flats or donating and upcycling materials and building materials or donating furniture post-event, um, really looking for ways to be sustainable, help the local community while you are producing these events um, to make sure that you are doing good while also, you know, doing our jobs at the same time. Yeah, you mentioned projection mapping and AV. And at a time when we're thinking so critically about waste and what mm -hmm. materials like we do or don't need, uh, I feel like AV is ready to be the star of all this. Like you can mm -hmm. really do do a lot effectively with the right AV choices, you know? Yeah. We've yeah. done a lot of digital signage as well. So instead of printing signs, we've tapped into different digital, you know, kiosks and had like signage or instead of just like, um, you know, static images, use those kiosks specifically for videos to run. So you get a little bit more um, to promote your experiences. Yeah. What has been um, the biggest nut to crack or challenge in the industry this year from your perspective? Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but I think it's like navigating the challenging economy. It has been an interesting year when it comes down to um, but budgets and the rising inflation costs, but then also um, sponsors have been a little bit more protective with their sponsorship dollars. So making sure that like when you are producing events, making sure that it really is the right experience for your clients or for your sponsors that you're looking to bring on board um, because the economy has been a little bit in flux. So people want to, when they are investing, it needs to be the right fit for them. So for us, um, it, that has probably been like the number one challenge. Yeah. And then finally, what are a few must haves for you in an event and experience? Something that could be behind the scenes, something unexpected, something that's often overlooked. Um, I would have to say the the entire element of like scale and like that sh social sharing component. So when you are producing an event, it needs to be beautiful. It needs to do its job and its purpose within like the physical walls and the footprint. However, it also needs to live in other channels and in other formats. And if there are those arms and legs and those extensions, that can just enrich the overall programming and you reach more consumers and you are ultimately scaling the experience. So whenever I'm sitting down to look at our programming, I want to make sure that we are taking advantage of all of the ways that we can get it out there into the world. Um, and then I also think, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but the authenticity and of your campaigns. So 
consumers are smart. They have the world at their fingers within their, their phones. So making sure that when we are producing experiences that they feel that it's authentic to the brand, you're speaking to them in a way that is approachable and the way that you are integrating all of the components is very organic and it makes sense across the board. Um, and sometimes I feel like it can be easy to, um, get removed from that when you're in the thick of the day to day, but really taking a step back and making sure that you are producing something that is approachable, but authentic all at the same time um, is, is key, I think, to success across the board. Yeah, I love that. Yep. Yeah. All right. So of course, all of our winners are going to be live at eventmarketer.com. Uh, all of the categories, many case studies, photos, the whole, the whole works. All of our winners and finalists join more than a decade's worth of innovators and designers that we've recognized in our magazine and online in this design and technology program. So congratulations. Uh, thank you uh, to all of our judges for participating and especially Tara for judging and sharing insights today. We appreciate it, Tara. Thank you so much. Yeah, and look out for news on our 2024 programs, including the 2024 X Awards, which will open in early January. I know some people are very excited about that. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. We hope 2023 brings you good health, good ideas, technology that performs, and designs that transform. So take care. Yeah, happy holidays, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Bye. Bye. Bye.